we are weighing uh, the use of an updated version of the current vaccines that cover the currently circulating uh, variants uh, of uh, SARS coronavirus 2, the virus that causes COVID-19. What we're hoping to achieve with these boosters is to restore the level of protection toward that which we saw with the original vaccines in which we not only protected against hospitalization and death, but we also protected against symptomatic disease. We are hoping uh, that these will be coming uh, in the first part of September, um, uh, and uh, that's what we're working towards. By changing uh, the composition of what is in these boosters, uh, we are able to elicit and essentially refresh the immune response so that it will hopefully do a better job uh, of uh, eliminating uh, the uh, virus. The problem is if we wait a few months till we have the kind of clinical data that we had before, well, you can see what happened with Delta and with Omicron BA1. We're gonna be on to the next thing. And so we may not be able to provide people with the kind of protection that we'd like that will hold them for a longer period of time. We're the first, I think, to acknowledge we don't wanna have people constantly getting booster shots. So the goal here um, is to use our best knowledge, and we're very comfortable with this, to provide people with the longest duration of protection uh, that we can. We heard loud and clear uh, from parents that they did not want us <laughs> to see kids uh, left behind. Um, and so uh, we will make sure that uh, oh, as we get submissions in and have the data that we expand the age range down, we can hopefully drive down uh, some of the adverse outcomes from COVID-19 in the next weeks, but then also hopefully protect the population against a swing uh, of, of COVID-19 that could come up uh, as we come into the fall months Thanksgiving time, when once again, we go indoors and people tend to get together socially, um, which we know is kind of a ripe uh, way to uh, uh, transmit more COVID.